Hey everybody, welcome to Amy Trace's very first webinar. My name is Faraz Ahmed, and today I'm really excited to show you the TC1. We just got our TC1 in last week. We have it set up in our uh, demo room, and we think it's a great product to kind of show you some of the highlights. Um, just a few little footnotes about uh, housekeeping about the webinar. We're very low key here, so feel free to ask questions and let's make this as interactive as possible. Um, if you have any issues or anything like that, give us a call. Matt will be able to help you uh, throughout it. And like I said, any questions, post them on the chats, and I'm going to try to answer them as we keep going here. Um, now, before we dive into the webinar, let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit about the TriCaster product line and how we got here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of these slides. All right. So when the TriCaster first came out, it was geared towards the broadcast market. And streaming video was kind of a secondary thought. It wasn't our primary purpose or focus. Uh, but over the years, over the last eight, nine, 10 years, streaming video has proven to be a successful and valid model for production delivery. Um, a lot of our clients, a lot of our clients on this list are focused on delivering only to streaming clients uh, because it's a valid model now. Um, along with that, our viewers are demanding more. They want more content. They want it to be hyper-local. Uh, they want it on the devices and where they are. Um, and they want it at their schedules. So that's becoming a bigger and bigger uh, impact on our model, if, if you will. Uh, because of that, the production model is changing. We can no longer just go in and produce one thing and send it everywhere we want to. Um, the streaming content needs to be a little bit different. We might need to create multiple types of streaming content. Uh, something for the home game, something for the away game, something for the social media feed. Our viewers really want to see uh, content directly aimed at them. Because of these things and the changing marketplace, NewTek sees um, the TC1 as a great way to kind of fill that void. Um, so introducing the TriCaster TC1, the one you've been waiting for. It's 4K, 60p, ready to go. Um, and we're going to kind of walk through some of the features here of the TC1. The TC1 is 4K all the way through. So 4K inputs, 4K outputs, um, 60p as well. So we're not just doing 30p as a lot of our competitors are. We're doing 60p throughout. This is really important for uh, live action. So anything with movement, so that's sports, that's concerts, that's anything where you want to see smooth motion. And you can stream in 60p as well. Now, of course, everything's 4K. So 4K inputs as well as 4K outputs. Now, if you want to bring things in 4K and then still output in HD, you can still do that. We have four 3G HD outputs, so we can still go out in uh, 3G if we want to. Um, the next one is the big one, 16 external inputs, 16. Uh, all of our existing clients here are used to seeing either the four or the eight external inputs coming into the TriCaster. We can now do 16, and those can be a combination of NDI or SDI. And we're going to talk about NDI a little bit more when we kind of go hands-on with the demo. Um, the next one is native IP processing. Everything that we do with the TC1 is natively IP-based. We don't go back and forth. We don't go back to hardware and then IP. NewTek has always been a software-driven company, and your TriCasters are software-driven. Um, and so that's a huge advantage uh, as the whole model is going to IP now. Integrated Skype TX, that's another huge advantage that we have. Um, it's the only production switcher on the market that has integrated Skype TX functionality. We're going to take a look at that on our hands-on demo. And then, of course, all the features that we're used to, like those internal two video servers or our DDRs, our four ISO recorders. Um, so we can record up to four things simultaneously. Uh, and then we can also do external ISO recorders. Um, we can stream live or publish on demand to all those sites. And our streaming engine has become a lot more powerful. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about that as well. Um, and then our internal or, or external NDI graphics, our virtual sets, uh, three independent multi-viewers. So we can see all of our 16 sources independently. And we can kind of configure each multi-viewer with scopes, of course. Um, it comes in a two chassis or three RU chassis here. And you can kind of see that picture right there. Um, it's got two gigabit Ethernet ports. Again, that's for our NDI and our streaming uh, services that we might have. So we can go to an internal and external network just to provide you a lot of flexibility. 
um, two graphic players, digital analog audio, and then PTZ camera control. This is going to become a big thing as um, you kind of move forward in the NDI world. Robotic cameras are becoming very cost effective and having that control built into the TriCaster is going to be a huge advantage. So in graphic form, it kind of looks like this. Um, right above me here, you've got the video servers, you've got the graphic channels. These are all the different inputs that you have coming in to the TC1. Um, about 36 channels of inputs coming in. Of course, there's 16 external ones, 16 again, uh, and that includes key and fill. All right. Let me go to our next slide here. So what we're going to take a look at is at some of our key features of the TC1. Um, and so the first one that I've already kind of talked about and I'm really excited about is our 4K 60p functionality. Uh, where everything we're doing is in 4K 60p as well as 3G SDI in full HD 1080p. Um, so that's one side of the equation, right, that we're really excited about and that's kind of the current technology that's kind of happening right now. The other side of this is NDI. Now NDI is a big deal and New Tech has really put all their focus into NDI and we've been talking about NDI for about a year and a half, two years now. A year ago it was a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz, everyone was kind of getting on board talking about it, but we weren't really sure how to implement it. Today the game has completely changed. Everyone is embracing NDI, not only partners of New Tech, but competitors of New Tech. It has become the standard to bring video uh, on your network and into the TriCaster. So all NDI is, is rather than work with an SDI cable that has a finite length and has a one-way connection, NDI basically creates a network for you. So when you connect your TriCaster to your internal network, any other NDI devices become available to the TC1 and vice versa. The TC1 becomes available to all those other NDI devices. At the end of the day, that's all it is. As soon as you connect to the network, you become NDI capable. It could be as simple as watching some of the outputs of your TriCaster or bringing Premiere in and playing back from Premiere into your TC1. So let's take a look at the TC1 here and see how that kind of looks here. All right, so this is our TC1 interface that we're taking a look at. And you can see the first thing you notice is all of these inputs here. These are all inputs that are coming in into my TriCaster. Now I could click on any one of these inputs and I can see that these are my local SDI inputs, input one, input two, input three, and input four. So those local SDI inputs on my TriCaster. And then the rest of these are what we call NDI inputs. These are those other devices available on my network that are producing NDI signals for me. So um, this is the TriCaster uh, 460 and I can access all of its cameras and all of its outputs. I can access another uh, input module here. These are all NDI devices available to me. Um, I've got a VLC player. So I simply just click on one and now I'm bringing in an NDI source. Um, to tell you right now, actually all these inputs that are coming in on our interface are NDI. I don't have any local SDI sources hooked up. I don't need to. It's much easier to populate this with NDI and you can kind of see this as all being NDI sources and ready to go. And of course, NDI and the SDI support that 4K at 60p. So that's the big highlight right there. 16 inputs, they could be NDI or SDI in 4K. Let's keep going here and take a look at some of our other features. The next big one is Skype. We have integrated Skype functionality. Um, Skype TX is the studio grade version of the popular Skype app. So basically it has all the broadcast features in Skype TX and that's integrated into the TC1. So there are 300 million active monthly users of Skype. That could be on your iPhone, your Android device, on your laptop, whatever you might have. And those folks can come in to your TC1. That's integrated right in. So let's take a look at how that works. So I'm going to click on one of my available inputs, one of the 16, and I'm going to say I want to use one of the Skype TX callers here. So I'm going to click on that, and that's now going to bring in the Skype feed. Now I can manage the Skype feed remotely. That way I don't have to worry about it on this computer. I can have my producer do it, I can do it on a separate laptop, and that software comes included. That interface looks like this. So this is my Skype interface, and you can see that I actually have two Skype TX callers. So I can actually bring 
two folks in simultaneously from different locations. And so I'm gonna call someone here, I'm gonna call Matt, and he's gonna come right in here. We're gonna establish that connection. Let's see if Matt is listening. He, Matt is listening there, and there he is. And if I go to my interface now, there is Matt, and he's coming right in. And I can see that he's coming in, I can kind of talk to him, and I can have that robust communication going on right here. And at the bottom, if you look at my audio mixer, you can see his audio is coming in. You can see these Skype callers, the two independent feeds, as well as that independent talkback. So I can choose exactly what I'm going to send them. All right, Matt, go ahead and say bye to everybody. I've had enough of you there. There you go. Thanks. All right. So that's your integrated Skype TX calling features built right in to the TC1. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the next feature here. Do a little switching around here, get everything going. Um, the next big one that we have is our two-time streaming encoders. We've always been able to do streaming on the TriCaster, right? From the earliest models, we can do streaming with our TriCaster. With the TC1, we've doubled that power. So rather than sending the same signal to Facebook and YouTube and all everyone else, I can send different signals to, to those uh, different providers, if you will. So my social media feed can be getting kind of a behind the scenes look maybe. And then everyone else can be getting my regular program feed. Let's take a look at how that looks. All right, so I'm gonna click on my program window here. And you can see I have four different outputs. My output one is program, which is what I want to send, let's say, to YouTube and in my internal streaming service. And then my fourth feed here, I, I've gone ahead and named it social, because that's my social media feed. It's kind of the behind the scenes look. It's going to have a few extra interviews on my concert. It's what I want to send out to maybe only Facebook Live and one other place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say stream one needs to be output number one. And then stream two needs to be the social media output. So I'll just change that to social media there. Now, I've got those two set up there, and I'm going to go to my stream encode. And you can see now, I can basically just select and highlight whatever I want here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of get rid of some of this extra stuff that I don't need. And I'm going to say the program feed, my master, needs to go out to YouTube Live, it needs to go out to Wowza, and it needs to go to our website. And then I'm going to say the social media feed needs to go to Facebook and Twitch TV. Those are my second encoders there. So encoder one is going to my primary, and then encoder two is going to my secondary there. And that's it. And now I'm streaming to five different places simultaneously, and two of those, um, they have two different independent streams. I'm seeing a question over here. I'm going to try to read it real quick. Give me one second. All right, perfect. I'm going to answer those in just a second as we keep rolling. Um, our next slide is basically just kind of a, a recap of all the core functionality of the TriCaster. Everything we've been able to do with our TriCaster, we can still do. So we still have our virtual sets. We still have our ISA recorder. We still have our DDRs. Um, we still have the ME reentry. All that functionality is there. Everything your existing TriCaster can do, the TC1 can do it, but it can now do it with these additional functionalities in 4K. So it's basically a massive upgrade to all the core functionality that you already have. Now the next thing that's also been changed is the TriCaster TC1 control panels. The control panels, you can see the bottom one, is a, a smaller compact control surface. Um, and it's been updated for all the new TC1 controls. And then the uh, one above it is the large control surface. It has all the new functionality of the TC1 that's been updated. It's a two ME stripe panel. So we can control everything the TC1 has to offer. And we have one in our demo room right here in front of us, actually. Um, actually, okay, this is a perfect example. I want to show you, Philip's going to hate me for this. I want to show you some of the power of NDI here. And I want to be able to show you this. So I have an iPhone here real quick, nothing fancy. And I'm just going to go in here and launch the NewTek NDI app. All right, so I've got the NewTek NDI app loaded in here. And what I'm going to do is on my interface here, I'm going to go to my input source, and I'm just going to choose the iPhone. There it is. And now my iPhone is coming in as a source. So I'm going to put this up on 
my program. And now Philip should be able to show you this here. So this is coming through just my iPhone camera here, nothing fancy at all. And this is why NDI is so powerful because I can basically create these new workflows. So let's talk about this control surface here. This control surface, you can see I've got my 16 inputs right here. All right, they're right there available to me as well as my DDRs and my MEs. I've got my T-bar and all that jazz that I'm used to. I've got a dedicated media player engine. I've got the positioner and dedicated PTZ controls now. They're ready to go, as well as some MEs and things ready to go here. All right, and the coolest function that I want to show you is actually around back, and there's Philip. Go ahead and wave hi, Philip. There we go. All right, sorry for the mess, guys. But back here is the cool thing I want to show you is that rather than a regular USB cable that we've been doing traditionally, we are now on a Cat5 Ethernet IP-based cable. And so now the control surface can be anywhere on your network, and it does not have to be next to the TC1 anymore. We can just have it on the network. And the same control panel can actually control different TC1s. So if I had multiple TC1s, it could control that. So a brand new control surface, we're really, really excited about it, a lot of power. Now, um, the other thing I kind of want to bring up since we're talking about this is this is why NDI is so cool. We had an idea and we got to implement it immediately. I'm sitting here in a live production saying, I want to add another camera. You can't do that without NDI. If I was on a traditional SDI workflow, I would have to go get a camera, a cameraman, and a cable, hook it up into my TC1 and hope that everything magically would work out correctly. With NDI, I literally pulled out my phone, launched the app, and I went. I added a camera to my production in under 10 seconds live while I'm streaming. That's why NDI is so powerful. And that's just one little example of it. And that's what's really cool about NDI is as you're working and as you're doing things, you're going to constantly come up with new ideas. Um, again, traditionally, if I had done something like that, your director, your producer would be like, you're crazy. This is just asking for a nightmare. With NDI, I don't even have to ask them. I just pull up the camera and ready to go, and it just popped right in. So really, really powerful. Um, it's kind of the most exciting thing to me about the TC1 and NDI is that you now own the possibilities. You can do whatever you want. Technology is not driving the content. You're driving the content now, and it's very, very easy to capture that. So that was a perfect example of that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the TC1 there. So that's the back of the TC1. You can see you've got your two gigabit ethernet ports, you've got your um, USB ports, audio ports and things like that, your multi-view. Um, right below you've got eight BNC connectors. Four of those BNC connectors are our inputs. So those are our SDI inputs right there and we can bring in our SDI sources through that. But let's say you have not gone completely NDI yet. You have more than four SDI sources. Your world, you know, you want to bring in a bunch of uh, cameras and things like that, and maybe four or five of them are NDI, but a bunch of the sources are still SDI based. How do I bring in more than four SDI inputs into my TC1? This is where the NCIO panel comes in. The NCIO module, I should say, uh, this is an eight channel module. And what it essentially does is it can convert NDI to SDI or SDI to NDI. So let's say I want to add eight additional cameras to my uh, TC1. I, I need you know, 12 SDI cameras. I get one of these uh, input modules and now I have eight additional inputs. And it's eight channels so I can mix and match this. So I can do four inputs and four out or seven inputs and one out. And this can go anywhere on my network. So a great example for this, I have someone in a press box. I think Charles, this is actually what we're gonna do with Charles DeWalt, I think he's on this list here somewhere. Um, what we're gonna do is in his press box, we're actually gonna build an input module, right? And so the input module is gonna have his cameras coming in and we're also going to have an output so that they can see what they're doing. But the TC1 is gonna be in their control room all the way across campus on another side in another building. And that's possible over the existing gigabit network that they already have. So the TC1 and the input module can be anywhere on the network. Um, and so it kind of looks a little bit like this. I mean, if you have everything together right here, that's what it's going to look like. You can kind of have them all stacked together. But honestly, you probably are going to want to have the TC1 in your control room 
and the input modules wherever your cameras are located, whether that be in, on the football field, in the auditorium, at a concert venue, um, you could have them local to where your cameras are. So a very powerful uh, workflow that's created and most of the cabling is already there over your existing gigabit network. All right, let's take a look at some of the product bundles and how the TC1 is kind of put together. Um, so, these 16 internal sources, external sources, the 4K, all this functionality that's happening, 36 source channels, that's the core of the TC1. Everything we've talked about is the core right there. And that starts at 14,995. So everything we've talked about, that core uh, unit right there uh, on the bottom left, it starts at 14,995. Now obviously there are bundles so that you can purchase the control surface with it uh, and other things with it here. So let's take a look at some of these bundles. Um, the TC1 Max bundle, this is essentially um, kind of the max that you can get. It's everything that you'd ever want. Uh, it's got the 3RU TC1, the NC1IO uh, input module, and output module for that matter, and the large control surface. Um, you've got the Deluxe here. This is a great value because you've got the 2RU TC1, you've got the input and output module, and the large control surface for $34,995. And then we've got the uh, base model. So this is still all that core functionality um, that we've talked about the entire demo. And then the small control surface or the compact control surface starting at 19995 This is essentially a TriCaster 460 uh, but with all that extra functionality that we talked about in 4K 60p. Now, the reason that we decided to do this webinar and the reason that we rushed it and really wanted to get it out there was this next slide. NewTek is offering incredible trade-up promotions um, to their existing TriCaster customers. So any eight input TriCaster, so that's the 850, 850 Extreme, 855, 860, or 8000, um, can upgrade to the TC1R uh, and get up to $7,000 off the TC1R. That's a massive amount of money off. And that's, like I said, even the oldest eight input TriCasters they have that option on there. So it's a very, very valuable uh, trade-up offer. Only valid until June 23rd. On the four input uh, rack mount units, you can get up to five grand off to go to the TC1s. Uh, and then if you have even an SD model, you can get some upgrade paths um, around $3,000 um, to get to them. And each one's kind of custom. So I recommend that if you're looking at an upgrade or you want to consider it, give us a call. We can build out different bundles. Um, this is very customized now because some people need a big input module and they need a big TriCaster but a small control surface or vice versa. They need the base TriCaster and they need the large control surface. Um, so a lot of mixing and matching going on and come up with the best bundles. Also keep in mind that your existing control surfaces do work with the TC1. So I have a client that said, hey, I want to go with the TC1. I can't afford to get the control surface right now. They're using their existing control surface. Same thing with the input and output modules. Right now, if you need four inputs, fantastic. Get the TC1. Later on, if you need to add four or six or eight inputs, you can buy one of those modules and that will give you eight inputs um, or outputs depending on how you configure it. And again, it's a hybrid. You can mix and match that however you want. Um, so I'm going to look over the screen real quick. Uh, and see if I can get some questions here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see what we got. So, the how many callers can Skype TX support at once? So, we can do two simultaneous calls, but obviously you can have as many people on queue as you want. So, if additional people, uh, you know, let's say you want to do a, a conversation between two people, and then we want to have additional people queued up, you can do that. But you can have two simultaneous callers. So one from New York, one from LA. We could both be talking to those simultaneously. Everything we can do supports up to 4K. Can we support more than, uh, can we support resolutions lower than 4K? Yes. So 4K is the highest, 4K 60p. But we, of course, support SD, HD, uh, at 30p, 60p, uh, interlaced. All those things will still get cross-converted and work for you flawlessly. Um, do all 16 inputs have to be NDI and how many can be SDI? Why NDI? Why SDI? It's really your choice. When you look at the workflow you want to create, we can kind of mix and match those for whatever makes the most sense. So things that are local probably need to make SDI. Other sources like graphics and computers and editing stations probably need to come in NDI. 
Uh, if you have something coming in remote, again, NDI makes a lot of sense. Um, and you can mix and match those. Um, so they can all be SDI, they can all be NDI, depending on how you configure it. And when you give us a call, we'll work on that workflow for you um, where it makes sense because NDI has a lot of advantages. Um, and then SDI, again, is still robust and still out there and we're all still using it. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, all your old production gear will still work with the TC1 in terms of connections and things like that. It's the same workflow. I'm seeing the question, I'm just answering them uh, out loud here. Uh, it's the same workflow. You'll notice that interface looked very, very similar. If I go back to this interface here, um, this interface looks very, very similar to your TriCaster. So minimal learning curve. You're just getting to do it in 4K uh, and you're getting to do it with all the additional functionality there. Um, oh, and then lastly, unless we have any other questions, does anyone else have anything else for me here? Lastly, I'd like to come invite you to our demo day. Um, it is on, Philip's going to remind me, uh, May 31st. Um, and there are different times, and you can register that uh, on our website. Um, so feel free to do that. Uh, it's at amytrace.com, and we're having a live demo day here at Amy Trace. Um, and so register for one of the sessions. We're going to have the TC1 out. We're going to have our input modules, output modules, and we're going to kind of show a lot of different NDI workflows as well as Skype TX working in real time. So um, I think that's going to be about it, Philip, unless there's anything else we need to add. Feel good? Any other questions out there? TC1 supports ME entry, absolutely. TC1 supports ME entry, um, and that's at all four ME entries. Um, and each ME has four key channels, uh, as well as four layers here. So if I go to a four input layer, give me one second. So each ME supports four layers, as well as four key channels, and then there's ME reentry. So um, all the power of the 8,000 is still here, and then a lot more. So ME reentry, and you've got four MEs, and you also have previs, which was an advanced edition feature. Uh, and of course, it supports comps. Um, so you can go back and forth and do some animations, uh, and it'll handle that. Uh, that was a question from James. Did I answer that, James? ME reentry is 100% supported, again, with four independent outputs, and it also has four independent SDI outputs. Do I need a license for NDI to bring a desktop or is it free? It's completely free. Most of your NDI tools out there are going to be very low cost or free. So bringing in an NDI desktop into the TriCaster is completely free. The NDI monitor is completely free. Um, the iPhone app is about $20, so very cost effective. Um, there are some, the Adobe, um, the Adobe NDI player is completely free. What that allows you to do is play back the timeline from Premiere and it comes in as a live input. No exporting, no rendering. Uh, same thing with After Effects. You can uh, play right back and it brings in the alpha channel as well. Just Friday I had someone ask me, hey, what format do I need to export this for the TriCaster? I said, don't worry about exporting it, just hit play. It was already configured for them because they had installed one of the codecs. Um, so the NDI player was already there. They simply hit the space bar in Premiere and it came as an input on the interface. So great questions. Anyone else? Um, I'm going to hang out here just for a little bit, uh, a little bit longer uh, over the chat function over here. Um, and then as well as if you have any questions, feel free to email us or call us. You can contact us on amytrace.com. We're going to be doing more of these webinars, so look out for them. And again, thank you for joining. And don't forget uh, the demo day here live in Amy Trace. Um, on May 31st. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.